Thank you to my sponsor, Cake Wallet, where you can store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android devices. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Girl Gone Crypto. I'm really excited. I've got Chase Chapman here, the co-founder of Try Crypto. So Chase, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you. So Try Crypto is a pretty amazing name. And the fact that you actually got TryCrypto.com is <laughs> like ridiculous. That's amazing. <laughs> so maybe just to kick off, tell us a little bit more about what Try Crypto is and what you guys are up to. Yeah, so it's probably helpful to sort of have a little bit of a backstory of like why we even started this. So I was working in marketing and I was doing a lot with data and analytics and sort of started to be kind of um, disturbed by the way that we were handling people's data, mostly because you buy data sets from third parties and, and people don't really get to own their data or get compensated for that data, which felt kind of wrong. Um, so I got into blockchain from that angle and started learning a lot more about it. And I quickly realized that it is not ready for mass adoption <laughs> because I was not super technical and I could not do almost anything because you don't know what's a scam you don't know what's like legit it's very weird to first get into crypto i'm sure you went through the same thing yeah. um and so i i started exploring the world of crypto a bit more and then i actually got involved in a program that uc berkeley uh sort of started called she 256 mm -hmm. so they match women who are interested in the space with mentors and i ended up meeting uh, my mentor who's now my co-founder nick and we started sort of working together to just figure out how can we make blockchain accessible to me, to my grandma, to my mom, um, to really these people who like typically, it's just not easy to get into this world, which sucks because it's such an amazing technology and you can do such cool things with it. So um, what we ended up doing was starting working on on a few sort of fun projects that are that are different and, and try to really approach this world in, in a user sort of centric way where we start with empathy for the user. And what we realized is that's an awesome way to do things, but developers first need to have the tools that they need in order to even build blockchain applications. And so what we started focusing on and, and what we're doing now is really building tools that help developers get into blockchain and actually build blockchain applications without having to learn all of the cryptography and wacky stuff that comes with the world of crypto and blockchain. So I, I love that you guys are focusing on making dApp development um, more approachable because a dApp is how I actually got involved in the space. And I think that ultimately, like that's how a lot of people are going to get involved in the space. And so like, why was this important to you? And what, let, just kind of walk us through, like what actually happens when someone comes to you with an idea for a dApp? Yeah, so um, it was important in the first place because something like data, right? So the, the whole marketing angle of how can people own their own data? Um, there are a lot of really cool and exciting ways where you can have your own data represented, whether it's you know it's something like a non-fungible token or or however you decide to do it. Um, there are some really cool ways where I could see startups totally disrupting that that field. I always say something like Uber, I think will be fully decentralized. But the question then is, how can a developer go from that idea to really building exactly what you're talking about, where it's a full-fledged app? Um, and so right now, those tools are, there's some really awesome tools in the space, but they are a little bit fragmented. And also, uh, the tone of some of them is a little bit too crypto-y, a little bit too crazy. <laughs> so uh, what we have is a few different products that are out and shipped, a few in the works. But the end goal is to have a developer who can come to us and say, OK, I want to build a dApp that includes something maybe like file storage. So if you're doing anything with something like a contract, for example. Um, and I also want to be able to control who has access to that contract. And I want to make sure that um, you know maybe there are certain tokens that can be exchanged based on that contract. And I'm not talking about a smart contract. This is like more of a legal document type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and so what a developer can do is we have a product called Dapp Starter, which essentially is kind of like a uh, you pick and choose what you want your smart contracts to have. And it generates a custom GitHub repository on the fly for you. So you have everything that you wanted that you need to build your dApp right there. And so a developer can start there and really customize you know, how they want to construct their dApp. But they're starting with something that's not zero. And that's a big deal. Because most developers, even if you're building you know, a web application, often they don't start with the first line of code typing it. They start with a template, or they start with what they call like a boilerplate. 
And from there, you can go and customize and build the application that you want. And so that's exactly uh, what we're doing now. And then in the future, we're working to, and we just came out with this last week actually, but uh, oh. but allow people to integrate their dApps with something like if you have a CRM, a customer management system, um, or if you need to be able to call an API, we wanna make sure that you can take this entire world of tech that we've developed over many, many years uh, and really take full advantage of that in, in the blockchain world too. So you can give consumers control over what they're they're you know doing in general, um, but also connect it with, with some of the functionality that we've developed in the real world. Um, and so really marrying those together and empowering developers to be able to do that too. So one thing I noticed, you just talked about Dapp Starter, and you know you've been talking about helping people, you know, get off of zero, start with their project. Um, but I noticed you have something called Dapp Connector as well. Is that so? If someone already has a working product, they can integrate blockchain, or how does that work? Yeah, so Dapp Connector is really intended to be at any point in your development cycle. So mm -hmm. anywhere from you are just starting to build to you already have a working Dapp. And the intention there is that there are a lot of amazing companies that provide uh, Oracle services for you know any financial system. So if you need to be able to pull the price of Ether at a certain point, or if you need to be able to pull in what the US dollar is trading at, you can do a lot of cool stuff um, with these sort of financial oracles. What is not as developed is an Oracle for sort of every other use case that is not DeFi. And that's where Dapp Connector is really coming in is how can we take something like, let's say you have an API that can unlock your car. Um, you could see a rental car smart contract totally managing that, but right now there's not an Oracle provider that's making that super easy. And so the goal there is really to allow developers to integrate their blockchain application with any system that they need that maybe they don't have right now. We're, we're very similar to like, if you're familiar with Zapier, that's that's kind of what that is, where you can connect systems and really customize it. So that's that's the intent behind it. And it really is at any point in the development cycle. So if you're a developer who again already has that DAP, but you want to extend functionality or do something differently, um, that's for you too. So now, do you guys build um, dApps exclusively on Ethereum or do you have uh, developers for other blockchains or what does that kind of landscape look like? Yeah, so our goal is really to empower developers to build awesome applications and make it so that whatever tech stack they think fits uh, is what they can build on. So right now we support Ethereum, Harmony, and Clayton. Uh, but we're currently in the process of also building out Near and a few other uh, blockchains that we're really excited about, and we'll do some announcements uh, in the in the coming weeks, which I'm excited about. But um, but the end goal is really to empower developers to build on any chain. So we're blockchain agnostic, um, and then all of our other products will also be blockchain agnostic. So there's no sort of here's what chain you should build on. Um, we really do want to make sure that developers have all of the tools in the toolbox. And so we will always be that way. Um, Ethereum will always be the first product, you know, because it's just, <laughs> it's it's the anchor for people, but, um, but we'll stay blockchain agnostic. Oh, that's exciting. So what does that process look like to add new blockchains into the mix? Is it that you need to hire developers that know that blockchain? Like, what does that process look like? It's an interesting process because, <laughs> uh, so if you're a blockchain and you are, uh, you know, in EVM and you have Solidity and, and you're very similar to Ethereum, it's a little bit different, it's easier mm -hmm. because we already have support for that. Um, but when we're working with something like Near, which is written in TypeScript, it's it's a, a different process because we have to rewrite the smart contracts, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But um, what what's interesting about that is that our goal is to really get developers who maybe were JavaScript developers and doing mostly web development um, able to build on, on a blockchain pretty quickly. And so what becomes more interesting is not just the building of the product, but how do we help people understand, you know, how you can construct smart contracts. And mm -hmm. there are obviously a lot of security and safety features that you need to, to build in from the start. And that doesn't change from the language perspective. So there are a lot of fundamentals that don't change. Um, but we always want to make sure that developers can build anything they want. And so from an educational perspective, things get much more interesting because it is a little bit more content. And and some of the newer blockchains are coming out with with different models mm -hmm. for how you handle things like resources. And so that's where uh, that's where things get very interesting. But ultimately, it's it's about having the developers and also having the uh, teachers and, and people who are willing to help developers understand what's different, but what's the same. 
Mm, okay. Now, one of the things that I think is really interesting and cool that you guys do is obviously you have all of these resources available for developers, but you also, it seems like, have a lot of educational material and free resources and even webinars and different things. So maybe tell us a little bit more about the kind of education aspect of your brand as well. Yeah, so we um, we have always been very much sort of centered on this idea of making blockchain accessible for mainstream users. Because mm -hmm. if you don't give people the power of understanding not just what blockchain is and how it works, but that like transparency is sort of built into this system, um, then you're not fully leveraging the power of this technology. So our goal is to, yes, empower developers, but also help people understand what's going on. So we really started, we actually started um, as like a sort of more of a nonprofit initiative to educate people. And once we realized, okay, wait, <laughs> there are not there are not usable pieces of software. There are not enough usable pieces mm -hmm. of software in this space. Um, we really started focusing more on the developer aspect of things. So now we, we do straddle that line where the goal is really to help end users and we'll continue to make content that helps end users. But the way of doing that is by helping developers understand what's going on. Um, so a lot of our content is centered around sort of people in general, because developers are people. People forget <laughs> that all the time. Um, and then we can get into the specific specifics of you know how to build certain blockchain applications but from the start it's about understanding why blockchain is is interesting and revolutionary in a lot of ways so i noticed you guys are uh, maybe it's already launched or it's about to launch but something called crypto workspace what is that about yeah, so TriCrypto Workspace is basically um, the developer's tool bench, kind of. <laughs> so when you generate a decentralized application with Dapp Starter, what you're doing is you're creating this custom Dapp that has all of these awesome features. Um, but when you do that, you need to be able to understand also, oh, here's how I can connect in you know, my, my uh, decentralized document piece with a certain API. And so what we've done with Workspace is really take all of the products that we're offering that we have and we're putting them in one place. Because the thing that I really think is a problem, and I think like people think all the time about user experience, but they don't always think about developer experience, which is a problem because again, developers are people. Um, and so what we're doing is taking all of those products and putting them in one place because blockchain in general tends to be a little scattered when you're talking <laughs> about uh, building things and using things. So the end goal of Workspace is really to give people one single area, literally, in their computer that they can look at and see, okay, here's the full story and here are all of the tools at my disposal to go ahead and build whatever it is that I'm building. So you obviously work with a lot of different people that are building different dApps. So I'm just kind of curious, like what kind of trends you're seeing in terms of what types of dApps are being created, like games, social media, different things like that. So maybe just tell us a little bit about like what you're seeing and then where you think that dApp market is going as well. This is an interesting question. And I think it's also the thing that everyone in blockchain is trying to figure out, like what are the use cases and what's actually what's yeah. happening, I think. So I've been really sort of uh, tuned in to this concept of the passion economy. Mm -hmm. um, there are some really interesting elements here that I've been sort of thinking about and playing with, and, and we put out some content about this too. So that and gaming. So to me, the passion economy in general is this concept of exactly what you're doing. So crypto is your passion, mm -hmm. um, and you're going and saying, okay, I can build this brand, and, and you could monetize it and you might not, but in any, in any case, you're taking something that you really love and saying, how can I actually make money off of this? And how can you as a creator uh, really make this sort of your thing? So with the passion economy, a lot of what's interesting is you can own your own content and find ways to do that in a decentralized system. YouTube and other things already sort of take cuts of that. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that's a very exciting trend that I think is going to be super cool. And then the other one is, of course, gaming. People have been talking about gaming for a long time, but now that we're seeing companies like Dapper with, with their new blockchain flow um, and other things like that, I think we're really getting to the core of what needs to happen in gaming, which is some of the some of the stuff that they're doing with flow is really cool because they're, they're, the architecture of the blockchain is much uh, better suited for being able to actually do games and, and gaming. So I think the technology is kind of catching up with some of the gaming use cases, which is really exciting. 
And then long term, what I am beyond, like I cannot wait for this to happen and I sound way too excited about it, but I am, <laughs> is the gig economy, I believe will be almost fully decentralized. So I mentioned this earlier, but Uber, it doesn't necessarily provide a consumer the most value and it doesn't provide the driver the most value. Um, there's not a huge reason to have a gigantic cut being taken out of these things when you could algorithmically match people. And you'll still have a platform that's like Uber, but it probably wouldn't be as profitable. And as a result, it would be better for both the driver and the rider. Um, same with Instacart, Airbnb, companies like that. I think will in probably not five years, but maybe 10, mm -hmm. uh, be fully decentralized or at least mostly decentralized. And that's what I'm really excited about. And that's sort of for Tri Crypto in general, like I want, I want us to be the company that those amazing blockchain based companies are built with. Um, and I think that's a future that's almost like undeniably going to happen. I feel very strongly about that happening. Oh, I love that. And I, I think that, I mean, you bring up so many great points with that about how, you know, these companies are taking these massive cuts, but why? Do we really mm -hmm. need that much administrative work to make this all run? Or like you said, can we figure that out with math and code and match people and take out that middleman, which generally is what blockchain is meant to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. And there are so many cases, like one thing that I was really sort of um, I, disturbed is not the right word, but I didn't, I was so surprised by this is during COVID, Instacart workers, um, people who are actually shopping, were making, typically they make, I think five or $6 for every shop they do. So it's a fixed fee per person who they shop for. Um, but during COVID, they were making three or four, which is strange because you have more people who are using Instacart. Um, the chargers, the shoppers are getting paid less. And in some cases, people are having to pay more. So it just, it's like, how is that happening? And that's that's one of those things where you're exactly right. The middleman is extracting a lot of value when technology can do a lot of that. You'll always need to have a team that is the Instacart, right. uh, for example, but it can be much smaller and it doesn't need to be nearly as profitable. And so that's where I think a lot of these technologies and being able to help startups disrupt um, a lot of industries will be really exciting. So I'm always kind of curious to hear, you know, different crypto companies talk about marketing and what they're doing. And, you know, you've mentioned you've got a background in marketing. And before coming on this call, we were talking about TikTok a little bit and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe um, if you don't mind sharing just a little bit about how Tri Crypto is approaching kind of getting the name out there and marketing and what you guys are doing from a content perspective. Yeah, so we uh, I love TikTok. I've been <laughs> really like I've been pushing it because I think a lot of people really sort of felt like it was this box where it had to, content has to stay within what's popular on TikTok. Mm. But the reality is that it's in TikTok's uh, benefit to expand what, what that type of content is and make that box much larger. So can people go to TikTok to learn things? They're already starting to do that. Um, and that doesn't mean that there's a gigantic market for crypto and blockchain on TikTok. <laughs> but I think there's a pretty big one that people don't necessarily uh, realize. So TikTok is a big one that I've been pushing recently. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we've also been doing, you know, Twitter is sort of the standard of, of what we need and, and those types of platforms. Reddit, which I'm very excited. Reddit just is starting to do uh, cryptocurrency sort of pilots, which is exciting. Um, but the other thing that we really believe is a strong way to help build a community is partnering with existing blockchains and platforms. So mm. we've partnered with Saya, which is a decentralized file storage uh, solution. And then we also have partnered with Harmony and a few other blockchains that we really believe not only have this amazing community that we can help tap into, but that we can help grow their community. Because at the end of the day, if you make uh, blockchain and crypto more accessible to people and then you say oh hey and here's this blockchain that you can build on and you can get started in minutes um, that builds their community too so we've been really strong on on partnering and we really we, not only is it interesting to get exposed to communities but you also get really great feedback from the teams and and build awesome relationships with the teams the blockchain world is very small so <laughs> it's nice to to be able to uh, get a lot of feedback from as many people as you can but also take some of those insights and uh, and help us build a better product. Awesome. Well, Chase, it has been so awesome getting to chat with you and just I, I loved hearing about everything you guys are doing to make DAP development easier and bring some of that um, kind of help and education to the space. So uh, Chase, where should people go to connect with TriCrypto? 
So you can go to trycrypto.com. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at TryCrypto and TikTok at TryCrypto. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was great to chat. I love chatting blockchain and the industry and what's going on. Um, and of course, love sharing what we're up to at TryCrypto.